Welcome to Center Stage. This week, I'm Banker Lloyd Thompson on WDL TV 38. This week, our exclusive interview with the man that Governor Jennifer Granholm once said on this program will be the presumptive nominee for the Democratic Party. We're talking about John Cherry, the Lieutenant Governor. Right after this break, we'll talk to John Cherry about a lot of things, the Democratic Party, the economy, healthcare legislation, and who in fact is John Cherry that most people perhaps may not know. Stay tuned. People are corrupt, they have a history of corruption. We need change, you know, we need investment in our people. I'm not here to do anything other than move this city forward. It's in all of our best interests uh, not to make the cuts so deep. Michigan must survive in order for this country to thrive. And we have to change the image if we want businesses to come. I hope that we will make our voices loud. The road ahead will be long. Well, let's bring in the man who should have been in the running for uh, Governor of Michigan for the Democratic Party, Mr. Lieutenant Governor John Cherry. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's a pleasure. Good to be here. Thank uh, you for the invitation. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let, let's, uh, I guess, for, for our viewers, uh, most of the time, perhaps the role of the Vice President, the Lieutenant Governor, is not that much of a public profile, if you will. But who is John Cherry? And uh, just a little bit of your background. Well, uh, in you know, the profile of Lieutenant Governor is even less than the profile of the Vice President. Um, I, uh, I grew up in a small Michigan community between Flint and Saginaw, Montrose, and uh, still, in fact, live in that area. I had, uh, um, I've represented that part of Michigan in the legislature for over 20 years. I, I've, uh, I first uh, became involved in state government back in 1975, so I'm in my 36th year. I started as a staff person for a state senator from that part of Michigan, then ultimately was elected to the Michigan House, went on to serve in the Michigan Senate for 16 years, and in the latter part of that service, I was the Democratic leader in the Michigan Senate. And then um, as I was termed out, because you know we put term limits in place during that time, the governor then asked me to run as her lieutenant governor back in 2002. So we've just completed the two terms that were allowed um, under term limits in Michigan, and so uh, I'm about ready to retire, I guess, from state government uh, at the end of this year. Uh, what would you say it perhaps would be, because uh, a lot of people, and I want to get into the, 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 the race for governor, there's a lot of people, or some people are watching and they're saying, look, uh, the Democratic administration presided over a dismal economy in Michigan. As you and Governor Jennifer Granholm prepare to exit the stage, uh, what would you say would be your legacy? Well, you know, I think uh, uh, they're exactly right. I mean, this, this time period from when we were first elected in 2002 uh, on into today and, and still continues is a, is a significant moment of economic trans transition for this state. And we were such a very strong state economically because of our position in manufacturing. And, you know, from World War II right on to the beginning of uh, this century, manufacturing was the, uh, the, the critical part of this nation's economy. It's, it's eroded with time as other nations have become more competitive, as are in fact our trade policies have allowed a number of jobs to move out of Michigan and out of the country in, into foreign markets. Uh, Michigan has now begun to see a significant transformation. So I think ultimately the legacy that the governor will leave here will be that um, during her term of office, while it was very difficult in terms of our state budget, and we've seen this major recession that occurred at the end of the Bush presidency, that um, while the economic circumstances were very difficult, that she laid the foundation for the next Michigan economy as you move into alternative energy, um, life sciences, um, uh, uh, advanced manufacturing, um, uh, water technology, all of these things that are going to be driving the economy of the future, we are putting in place today. The big difference in all of that is mm -hmm. that it requires much more in the way of skills to participate in that economy. So one of the, one of the legacies here is the beginning emphasis on recognizing education goes beyond K-12. So when you as the Lieutenant Governor looks back three years ago, what would you say this administration would have done differently that it has not done? 
Well, I, I, I wouldn't say that would do a whole lot differently. First of all, in spite of this terrible economy, this administration has balanced the budget eight years, or at least seven years in a row. We we're currently working on the last budget. To me, that's what administration is supposed to do, is to balance the budget. It's preserved the basic um, social safety net. And in my mind, that's exactly what the administration should do, is preserve the social safety net. It has been very aggressive in recruiting businesses from other countries and other states. I believe that's exactly what this administration, in fact, during the full seven years that we've had, Michigan has been up in the top of uh, four or fifth uh, in nationally in terms of recruiting businesses to the state. And the other thing we've done is we've increased the emphasis on increasing college graduates in our population. It's not been perhaps as quick as we'd like, but we've done that. So I mean, I think we have focused. Uh, we've obviously been plagued for some difficult economic circumstances, but that's not of the governor's making. Any governor who was served during this time period would have seen these, this economy. But when you do a self-introspect, uh, right. can you say, well, I mean, there are things perhaps we could have put in place in a better way? Um, well, you know, if I guess if I had an, uh, a, a, an option to, to make the world different, right. I would have made sure that Chrysler never reached the point where it may have gone bankrupt. I would have made sure that General Motors never reached the point that it went bankrupt. And I would have made sure that the federal government became an active partner with the state so that Michigan would have never been put in this situation. I think most of our problems have been put upon us by how this nation's economy has been managed. And, and I think we need to recognize that. If no matter who was governor during this time frame, they were dealing with circumstances that were imposed on this state by those who controlled the national economy and national politics. And there are those who say, well, still, it does not excuse the Democratic administration from doing what it has to do uh, if you preside over this shape of state. Well, you know, if I can tell you this, if it was in the power of the governor to prevent Chrysler from going into bankruptcy, she would have. If it was in the power of the governor to prevent General Motors from going into bankruptcy, she would have. If it had been in the power of the governor to make sure that George Bush did not uh, ship jobs abroad, she would have prevented that. The fact of the matter is, is most of Michigan's problems have come from the outside. I think the governor has done a magn magnificent job of managing that problem in the context we face. You know, in this terrible economic times, to have straight seven, seven straight balanced budgets is significant. When I first got, a, when I was in the legislature, Michigan had a $10 billion general fund budget. Now it's around $7 billion. There's let's, been $3 billion let's, out this let's budget. Let's hold that thought, Mr. Lieutenant Governor. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation and, and of course, talk about what most of you viewers are expecting, his reaction to perhaps pulling out of the race for governor. We'll be right back.